the River Source Logistics podcast, where we talk about the latest in e-commerce, Amazon logistics, and ways to take your business to the next level. We're the owners of River Source Logistics. My name is Kevin, that's Jen, and that's Jonathan. We're the largest Amazon 3PL in the country. We've done over 100 million in sales in e-com, and we know what it takes to build and scale your business profitably into a real brand. Guys, in this episode, we're gonna learn how to take your crazy business to the next level, right? All right, now we're gonna get your sanity back. Um, we're gonna teach you how to scale and grow through accountability, ways to hire, um, and elevate your team to eight players. Today, we welcome Jamie Munoz. Hi, Jamie. Um, she's from Virtual Lux Atelier. We actually hired her for River Source and our e -com company to help us get it together, uh, get us efficient, get us rowing in the same direction. Um, and I just wanna say, welcome, Jamie and introduce yourself. Hey guys, super excited to be here. Um, like Jen said, my name is Jamie Munoz. Um, I live in Phoenix, Arizona. I work primarily virtually, um, but do some in-person stuff here and there, and I like to travel a bit. Um, I'm a dog mom. I've got three dogs at home that like to kind of pop on camera sometimes when I'm working with my clients, which is fun. Um, I love Disney, as you can tell by my background. Disney is kind of my, my thing. And I am extremely passionate about a system called EOS, which is the Entrepreneurial Operating System. Um, I'm what's called a fractional integrator, which is a term that kind of comes from the system and from the book Traction by Gina Wickman. Um, so basically, I come in and I team up with the visionary, the leadership team, so that way we can, you know, crystallize, execute on the vision, dial things in, um, just really help you get what you want out of your business. Um, there's several tools that we use, and it's a lot of, you know, leadership and team coaching as well. So I'm really excited to be here with you guys and talk more about it and how it can help everybody else. Guys, this is our first podcast, but going forward, our goal is to bring you guys the latest and greatest content to help you guys scale. So if you guys have any questions, thoughts, or topics you want us to cover, uh, leave them in the show notes, post on Instagram, Facebook, let us know. Uh, we're here to serve you guys. And uh, yeah, let's get to it. Well, I appreciate you being with us today, Jamie. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start off with the first question for you. Um, for all the clients that you help and consult for, what do you find as their biggest issues before they start, um, when you first start with them? Like, what's broken in their business? Um, so I started, I started kind of making this list of what are the, the typical things, right, that people are struggling with. And the, the thing at the very, very top of that list is actually the visionary giving the team whiplash. So it's the, the owners, the people right up there at the top of the business, like, we're going to try this new thing. We're going to do this. Oh, I just went to this seminar. I learned this great thing. Now we're going to do it. And it's just this crazy, like, well, what is going on day to day from people? And, and there's lack of clarity and vision, right? One day we're going this way and the next day we're going this way. So it's, it's really hard to gain traction and get where you want to go if the visionary and leadership team is not on the same page, right? So that's really where it stems up at the very top. Um, you know, there's lack of clear vision across, you know, whether you have 10 people or 100 people, you have to make sure that everybody understands what it is. Um, so that's, that's the main thing where I see people struggle. All of the other things feed into that. Um, you know, people issues, there's lack of clear accountability, right? If we don't know where we're going, we don't know what we're supposed to do. And then no one's holding anyone accountable to getting stuff done or meeting, meeting expectations. Um, you know, we're lacking in clear process and procedures. There's none of that in place. It's kind of, you know, everybody's doing everything. And um, that kind of leads to weak measurables, right? We, we're not looking at the right numbers. We don't have a, a good strong scorecard or KPIs. So we don't have any of these things together. This is typically what I see when I talk to, to visionaries or, or struggling leadership teams. That's, that's kind of the crux of the issues that I hear. Yeah, Jamie, I mean, everything you said resonated so much, especially for us on the River Star side. Um, we had, uh, I mean, we had no account accountability for our staff. Like we wanted to hold our team accountable, but we were really struggling with that process. Um, we, uh, 
none of our processes were really documented. So everyone knew what they were supposed to do. But if anyone new came, like it was like throwing them into the pool and it's sink or swim. Um, everything would take four times as long to get done. So if we had like a project um, or anything like that, we'd be like, all right, this is what we're doing. And, you know, maybe there was some of that whiplash going on. And I, I think, you know, the hard part was, is that it wasn't that we weren't working hard or that our team wasn't working hard. Um, it's just that like, we were flying around by the seat of our pants and it was just exhausting. And like, to be honest, like by the time you came in, like it just wasn't fun for us anymore. Yeah, yeah, that's not a fun place to be. It's when you're working harder, not smarter. And then when you start hitting those days where in the morning you're like, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to go. That's a problem. It should be like a hell yeah, I'm going, you know, kind of feeling. Uh, just to speak into the whole yanking the wheel, you know, I think we all, as entrepreneurs, you read business books or you go to a conference, you read four hour work week. And then you try to build this like remote business and you're like, that doesn't work. And we need to read this other book about just operations and systems and you go crazy on that. And, and definitely, I think our, our team suffered um, some whiplash of us just jerking the wheel uh, left and right, like every month, you know? Um, and going back to what Jin said, like, it's not that those things aren't bad, are, like aren't good, but uh, it's just, we lost focus and our team, they can't read our mind and, and we weren't good at communicating exactly what we're doing at the right cadence and the pace. And so definitely that's a, that's something we really struggle with. Right. Yeah. All these tools are great. Conferences, the books, everything's wonderful, but if there's no follow through yeah, and your team starts to build this level of, uh Oh, Kevin said he's going to a conference. <laughs> what are we going to do next week? You know what I mean? Rather than excitement for like, okay, we're actually, we have a way to implement this and use the tool and make sure that we have some accountability behind it. And that's true of anything you guys want to implement, not just EOS, but again, you go and you listen to something great and you want to bring it back. There has to be a process and an intention behind it, right? Yeah. Talk to the leadership team about what it is that you want to do. Put a plan in place, right? It's not just an overnight, hey guys, we're doing this thing. It's, there has to be intention behind putting it in place and then it'll really stick and permeate into the, into the company. Yeah. Jamie, I think there's one thing that like just kind of buzzed in my head too while you were talking. And I think something that like was really eye-opening for the three of us too is like that role of like the visionary and the integrator and like what each person is good at because, um, I'm really good at being like, this is a great idea. We should do it. And we'll start. And then, like you said, I'm horrible at the follow through and the follow up on the back end. So it, like, it's imperative to make sure that like you identify, you know, those roles in your business and who can kind of be your integrator to make sure that all the crazy ideas um, really actually come to fruition. I, I loved uh, when we went through that because as a visionary myself, like, I actually felt guilty. I'm like, oh, why? Like, I'm hurting my business. Like, but like, I'm just built this way. This is my DNA. And when you kind of explain that, no, that's actually a strength and you have to be in the right seat. Um, and you should stay out of operations. And that's the stuff that you don't like. And you need someone over there. It, it kind of, I felt like I was set free. Um, and I was like, set free to really run hard and and do things that I do well. Uh, and that a lot of times, I think when you compare yourself to these other businesses, you're like, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm hurting my business. And actually, no, you're exactly where you need to be as a visionary, so. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead, Jonathan. Exactly, I, I agree with the same thing with um, all of us kind of bumping our heads together for a while there uh, and, and not be able to find that same path. And then once we kind of learned where our seats were and what those roles were within that, I think that really started to give us some some headway. I'm like, okay, yeah, this is where I'm supposed to be going. So I can't agree more than what, what, what um, Jim and Kevin both said. It's your unique ability, right? It's what you're good at. It's what you like to do. Um, and when you're good at something and you like to do it, that's fun, right? Then that's mm -hmm. going to work and having a great time and enjoying what you do. And then almost in your head, you're like, I'm getting paid to do the things that I love and want to do and I'm good at doing. It's like, 
is this really a thing? Is this really like what it's supposed to be? And it is, it really, really is. It's not just about having a J-O-B or having a job, whatever. It's, it's really about finding that, that right position for you in that right seat. You know, Jen and Kevin, you guys have all these great ideas and, and all these things you guys want to do. You've got Jonathan there as your strong integrator to kind of make sure all of these things are happening, right? Actually facilitate it to happen the right way so that you guys can step back and be like, wow, it's here, it's happening. Because again, it's not your unique abilities to actually put it in place. And that's just the reality of it, right? That's us knowing ourselves and our strengths. And I think that's a big piece of being successful in anything like this is you have to know where you live and where you're good at and what you can really do to benefit the team and what you're doing to help them. Yeah, I, I think I realized uh, very quickly that I was actually hindering the team. I've actually had experiences where people have been like, can you just let me take care of this because you're gonna mess it up? Um, which is really humbling, but also like Kevin said, it's really freeing because I don't love doing those things. Definitely, definitely. Jamie, you, you mentioned a couple things like vision and people. What are what are some other essential elements of a business owner that they need to focus on when trying to take that business to the next level? Um, I would have to say, like, for me, it would be coring it to the essential, like the six key components of the EOS process. So the, there's six key components that, again, if you can dial these six things in, it's really going to help you um, not only keep things simple, but have a common um, speak and a common vision for the whole company, right? Everybody's running on the same, the same, um, everybody's running on the same process, right? They understand how to use it. There's common terminology. Um, so the first thing is going to be um, dialing in vision, making sure you guys have a clear with what EOS defines as a vision traction organizer or your VTO. Mm -hmm. Your VTO is going to be kind of your all in one summary business planning document of like your game plan. How are you going to go in and win the game? How, you know, what is it you guys are going to do? What makes you special? What makes you different? You make sure that you're clear on your core values. So that's going to be really important later when we're hiring people and we're putting the right people in right seats. All of that stuff, super important. Um, so that's kind of our vision component. We're gonna identify our one year, three year, and five or 10 year plans. So we know what it looks like. We can literally visualize. I usually make people close their eyes and visualize. Like, what does it look like? What does the company look like one year from now? And we're gonna put those pieces in place, right? Is it the size? Is it the location? Is it a culture thing? Is it you know, a system we need to put in place? Like, what do we need to do to get there? Um, next up is data. You have to make sure you have a clear scorecard and KPIs. You have to have measurables that are telling you if you're doing things right, mm -hmm. right? We can look at things like P&L, right? We can look at stuff when it's done, but if we're not looking at things that are leading indicators that are going to get us the result over here that we're looking for, then what's the point of looking at numbers at all? Just to say you look at numbers, like to feel like, I'm an adult in a business and I'm looking at numbers and that means something, it doesn't. If it's not helping you, it's not valuable, then don't use it, right? Um, next up would be process. That's usually where I live. That's my favorite. And I had to realize that everyone else usually hates process. Um, I've found that people usually hate process because um, it's too complex. It's, it's not something easy that people can follow. And to the effect that we can dial things in, we can have clear handoffs, again, clear measurables that tell us if the process is working. Then from there, we really know, you know, if our processes are working or not. And this is where we can gain efficiencies, right? We can drop some of that, those dollars to that bottom line when we pick up those efficiencies. Um, next up would be people. Our accountability chart, like you guys mentioned earlier, we want to make sure that we have the right people who live our core values in the right seats in the company. We have to have a clear picture of who's doing what. Because I can tell you from my past experience, when everybody's kind of doing everything or helping, the second that something goes wrong, uh -huh. 
Uh-huh. But that was yours, right? That You, no. And it's not just to say that we have fingers to point when something goes wrong, but what it, it does is it allows us to say, hey, it's a people issue or a process issue or something where we kind of know who to go to and what, where to go with it, because that's going to lead us into the next component, which is, which is issues. If we have a problem, it's not you're fired. You, you messed up one time, you're fired, you're out of here. It's okay. What is the root? What is the problem? Let's clearly identify, dig down deep into the root issue to solve it. Because a lot of these surface level things that are symptoms, it's, it's going to keep coming back because we didn't solve that root problem. And again, a lot of time it's a people issue or a process issue. Um, but with clear accountability, it's so nice to know, again, visionaries, I know what I'm accountable for. I'm in my seat and I'm, I'm good at it and I know what I'm supposed to do. I'm the integrator. I'm in this seat and I know what I'm supposed to do. And if something goes wrong or there's an issue, you can clearly identify it, discuss it, and solve it together as a team. You have tools to do that together. And then from there, it's just continuing to move forward, right? We have coaching opportunities and we have, we have processes we can use to help coach people up. So that's, that's really important is that people issues tie in there. Um, and then the last piece um, is traction. Having meetings. The one thing I forgot to mention in the very beginning is usually people mention meetings as just being junk. Meetings just are terrible. You don't want to have them. They're not effective. Um, you, you know, you leave and you're like, what did we even talk about? Or who's supposed to do something? What We said we were going to do something, but then that person never did it. And then they were like, whoa, was I supposed to do something? I don't know. So all these things come together in the traction component where we make sure we have effective meetings. We've got a clear agenda. They start on time, they end on time. What a concept. Imagine that. I hear so many times where people are like, yeah, that last meeting went over like 45 minutes. And I'm like, ugh. There was probably no clear objective or goal or purpose. It, it wasn't being driven by one person to make sure that it was gonna hit the mark. So. Dialing in meetings, I should have mentioned that in the beginning, that's usually one of the first things that people are like, oh, my meetings suck. Well, we're gonna work on that. And then rocks, rocks are 90 day goals. When we take that vision of that one year, we're gonna literally chunk it out into actionable 90 day size things. And at the end of the year, it's, they're done, done, done. We've completed all of our goals that we wanted to reach this year or we've readjusted, you know, COVID happened. People were like, now, okay, my business needs to dramatically change now. What, let's go back to the one year. What should it look like? What does it look like now for us? Now we have a tool to figure out what our game plan is, right? Let's adjust our game plan, tell everybody about it. We have shorter windows of goals to get done and keep moving forward. So that's kind of where um, to answer your question, Jonathan, where all six of these things come together and work together, it's not kind of pick and choose. It's kind of like they, they all go together um, to help you get down to basics, get down to the essentials, fix those things, and it'll take you, it'll take you places, I promise. That's so good. Um, Jamie, as the visionary in our business, I often had it all in my head, but I didn't have the, the skill set or the ability to communicate it so that we were all on the same wavelength. If you could just give like uh, just one key strategy um, for just our listeners, like what's one way that they can really help uh, make sure that vision that the visionary has gets communicated into the rest of the team? I would have to say uh, the most important step would be having quarterly meetings. So from there, you can get with your leadership team, your core team, and again, get all those visions out. Talk about what does the next 90 days look like? What does the next year look like? Really pull those ideas and things out of the visionary and get them clear and set on your VTO, on your plans, on your documents there so that you understand where you're headed. What can happen is again, you get maybe halfway through the quarter and the visionary is like, got a new idea, now we're going this way. 
that's when we literally are going to pick up that VTO and say, okay, I hear you, great idea. Super great, great idea. We said we wanted to do this. <laughs> so how does that fit into this? And we wanna kind of get the visionary because we don't want all just say, no, no, we're doing this, no. We want to get to a point where maybe it is a better idea. Maybe we should go in that direction, but we need to all clearly understand what that looks like. What are the financial implications? What, what is the structure? What are the people involved? What are the resources you need? Like, let's get together as needed, get together with the right people when you need to and discuss a plan moving forward, make sure we're all clear on what it looks like, and then we can keep going. Yeah. Awesome. Jamie, you know, uh, one of the things that we we always were always slamming our heads up against the wall was when we were trying to make huge decisions for the company, whether it be new um, purchases of real estate or bringing on new people or higher positions within the company, uh, not knowing enough to make that informed decision. You know, we had dashboards or we had our scorecards and some KPIs that we would look at. Um, however, it was still seemed like we were kind of making decisions on a whim. Um, do you have any tips for our listeners for any KPIs or certain figures they should be looking at when they talk about the data that you suggested um, when they run their businesses? Yeah, so especially other companies that do what you guys do, right? You guys are an e-commerce industry and you guys live in data and analytics and reports and numbers and all these things every day moment to moment things are changing right so a lot of times we want to drown in the data we just want to look at all the numbers and then kind of feel what we think is happening and then keep moving forward i see a lot of times fires are still happening though right mm -hmm. like things are still popping up that we didn't expect or didn't know were happening so if there's a way that we can dive into our processes and our people and extract KPIs from the activities that, that those things are driving, then from there, we can monitor them and know if they're on, a tr on track or off track before some big thing explodes over here that we weren't really looking at at the beginning. So to the effect, you can look at a person and their seat and the accountabilities, the expectations of their process and all of the things that they're doing, if we can pull out those little pieces that lead to the desired result, track those week to week, day to day. I mean, whatever cadence is going to really give us the right data, it's typically weekly, then that's gonna be valuable. There's not like one common thing that I've found, you guys can probably speak more as experts in, in your field as to very specific things that may help you guys in what you look at. But usually that's where I try to pull from is the process and the accountabilities of the what, what we're wanting to get, like back out of it. What needs to happen over here? If we wanna sell $10 million this month, do we just get there? Do we just, we just sell it? just happens no oh, you have to step out of it week after week what are the actions and things that you do that will lead to 10 million dollars a month that'd be pretty awesome right 10 million so dollars a month. kind of like reverse engineering it yes and then holding everyone accountable to to those steps that's the next step hold everyone accountable to them if things are off track or if we're blowing it out of the water and we're we're way over what we think our goals should be there's a point where our sales function and our operations function are going to not be coexisting. We have to find a way that they can integrate and scale together as closely as possible. Because yeah, it's great if all of a sudden next month we triple our revenue, operations didn't know and they couldn't support it. And now we're out of product. That's bad. Sales, good, great, awesome out of product, bad, right? So we need to find a way that we can move that together as close as possible. That's awesome, Jamie. Um, another thing that I think we struggled with uh, as we were growing our businesses was really that 
we felt like I knew what I was supposed to be doing. And I, I feel like I knew what other people were supposed to be doing. And some of our longer term employees knew that, but uh, we really struggled with keeping that consistent across the team, right? So we're like, hey, this is the process for how we are going to case pack and close and tape boxes and put them away, right? Everybody knows, right? At least that's what we think. Um, and then someone new comes on or there's some sort of change and, you know, you walk out and you're like, why are you guys doing things this way? And they're like, oh, we thought this was better. And it's like, no, 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 no. That's, we have a process. And they're like, oh, how was I supposed to know? You know, um, for, for those listeners who might be struggling with that, like, do you have any tips to help them kind of quickly figure out how to get that systematized and, and communicated efficiently? I would say it's probably part of your onboarding process. If it's for new people coming in, right, it's making sure we have a clear actionable either checklist or onboarding or training. Maybe we pair somebody with someone as like a shadowing situation. These people that have been on for a long time and kind of know the right way, pair them with that expert to have them kind of learn and grow from them. So that way they're just not thrown in. I mean, again, think back when we were younger and had our first job, you know, and you're kind of just thrown in there and it's like, I don't know where the bathroom is. I don't like, what time's my lunch? Do I pick this up? What do I do? Like, and you feel so lost, you know, you just don't know what to do. So imagine, take yourself back to when you've worked somewhere and been that person, person on the first day, right. Or first week. And you're just like, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Let's bring people in. Let's not, explode their brain like let's not just overload them with training the first day let's have an intentional plan on how we're going to onboard someone and what that looks like you know who they're supposed to be working with um in my past i've found it really 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 valuable in companies where you have a, i came from custom manufacturing background so when you have multiple steps in the process right no matter what company you are and everybody kind of comes together to make one thing to the effect that you can have people shadow with other departments so that they understand what they do. You're mm -hmm. going to give them a glimpse into how what they does affect them. Right. Cause a lot of people work in a vacuum or a tunnel or a silo and they're like, this is just me and what I do. And then you pass it off to someone not knowing how, what you're passing off can affect them. And I think that's a really, really important thing to consider when bringing on someone new or even, even people that you've had for a long time. Maybe everybody's been with you since day one, but you're having issues with communication or that team's always messing up or they never give us what we want, right? Shine some light on it. I would send guys out with that, that stayed in the office, send them out with guys in the field so they could experience what it was like to be a field technician right? That's eye-opening for a customer service person to kind of go out there and see what the techs are, you know, up against and see what, what people are doing. So um, to answer your question, Jen, hiring on core values, right? Making sure you're bringing in the right people. You can train them on what you guys do if you have clear processes and if you have clear training. Um, even if you don't have documented training yet, as long as you understand the objectives of what the person is supposed to be doing, there's a great book called Start With Why by Simon Sinek, which is something that I think is kind of cornerstone to any, anybody being a good leader or manager is understanding that when you're training people, you have to give them the why behind what they're doing. If I told you to go mow the lawn, you could mow it, but then I go out there and you didn't, you didn't cut the sides or you didn't cut like a Mickey Mouse pattern in it like I wanted, or you, you know, you didn't do it right, but I didn't give you a clear expectation of what done looks like. Hey, go mow my yard. And at the end, I want it to look like Alice in Wonderland's garden with Mickey Mouse in the front. That's what I want it to look like. Now you have a clear picture of what done looks like, and you're not just going to mow the lawn. That's kind of what we want to have in mind when we're bringing on new people and we expect them to learn and do stuff. Again, we can train we can train for the technical stuff, the skill, the packing boxes, all those things. We can train people to do that. It's, 
it's the core values that we really want to make pe sure people are fit on when we bring them into the company so that they are willing to learn and willing to grow. Because again, in what you guys do, you're growing like this. And if somebody doesn't know what growing like this looks like, they're not going to be on board for it. If they want to work at a company that just stays like this, that's much different than a, a growth trajectory like the types of companies you guys have. Hey, Jamie, um, you, you know, you're talking about the right people. And I think for us, uh, in reflection of the past, like we made the most progress when we made the right hires and we got those right people on board. And um, so when we had the wrong people on board, it just, it dragged on, took way too long. And we just kind of like, we're just sitting, spinning our wheels. What, what are some tips as far as uh, making sure that you have that right person? I think one thing that uh, in the past we struggled with is we'd interview all these people, but we're like, I don't know. It's like anyone can like put their best foot forward, you know, and like, you know, have a great uh, interview, but then who are they going to be like uh, three months from now? How do we know they're the right hire? And so uh, if you share any tips um, or advice on like, how do we make sure this is the right person? a right fit for, for our business. Yeah, so that's another one that's common with everyone, right, is having a great hiring process because at the beginning, it's like, we just need a body to do stuff. Like, Fogamir, you're here, let's do it. So it's, it's kind of changing that mindset, right, where we want to provide a culture and environment for those that we work with that we enjoy, that we wanna come to work. We wanna do these things. Um, so having that clear understanding and picture of our core values is going to be really important. In terms of hiring process, I've done a lot of different research, been involved in this a lot with a lot of companies. I follow a lot of Dave Ramsey entree leadership style um, when it comes to hiring uh, methodologies. So it's definitely important to dial in your hiring process. Now that being said, at various levels in the company, you wanna hire a little bit differently, right? So if you're hiring, hiring an executive level, you know, leadership team member, you're probably gonna to need to meet with them more. You're going to have multiple interviews, different types of interviews. Maybe if, you're in, if it's an in-person thing, maybe you go to dinner with them. Maybe you go to dinner with their spouse and your spouse, and you guys, you know, kind of connect on that level because again, bringing someone into your leadership team this is somebody leading your company. This is somebody that has to share your values, that you have to be able to trust, high, high levels of trust. So we're trying to do that. Like think of, you know, you're courting someone, like it's like you're dating. You wouldn't just marry the person you talked to on the phone one time and read a piece of paper that said how great they are. I can tell you that all the great things my husband would probably write about himself on this paper, you know, they're not, like you said, Kevin, they're not gonna tell you, oh, and then I uh, don't make the bed. They're not gonna put that on there, right? Through these casual conversations, these dinners, these other interviews, these panel interview style things, you can start trying to gauge stuff. You wanna avoid asking yes or no questions. You want them to talk more than you, which is hard for some visionaries, not to pick on you, but, Visionaries usually want it. They want to do all the talking. And by the end, the person they've interviewed has said a few sentences and they sound great. The visionary needs to be quiet. You need to ask your question and stop and let them talk, 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 talk. You're looking for them to talk themselves out of the job. You want people to eliminate themselves. You want to get down to where you have one or two people that you're up against here and really hone in on the questions you ask people. Ask questions around core values. You know, if one of your core values is hustle, um, tell me it's about a time where you were up against a really tight deadline and you had very little resources, you were already over budget, um, but you had this deadline you had to meet, what did you do, right? You're starting to hear that if they were like, um, I told somebody else to do it and I went home. Oh, well okay, you're probably not a fit for us then. You know, you're trying to just pull these things out of people. And um, I think it's clearly identifying what you want from the seat, what you want from the person, what the expectations are. 
right? Not just the tasks, right? People list the stuff that they can do on their resume and people list the things that they want people to do on their job description, on their, on their posts that they post on the job boards. Mm -hmm. But what we're really looking for is the result. What is the thought process that this person has to get to these results? Right. If we can figure out and identify that this person has the right thought process when they're trying to make decisions and doing things, then how they do it, you know, I do it with all my highlighters. Jen does it with all her highlighters and somebody else may not do it with highlighters, but we, we met the target. We got there. So I think that's, what's really important is understanding who you want very, very clearly and be picky about it. Like you guys were saying, if you let the wrong people in, A, they're an HR nightmare and they're hard to get out, and B, they run the good people away. So don't let it happen. That's my advice. Really good. <laughs> and there's lots of search, like recruiting firms out there, and you know, especially in, in the EOS community, there's there's targeted search firms at any level of team member you're looking for that will vet them and help you hire them, um, you know, if, in all types of different ways. And there's different assessments and all kinds of stuff. So it's, it's gotten a lot easier, I think, over the years um, to dial in how to find the right person. That's really helpful. That's very helpful. Jamie, um, one of the other things that we used to run into all the time was issues. We'd always have these problems and problems and problems and we'd We'd solve them and it always feels like we were duct, duct taping a solution together or something of that nature. Um, and, you know, three months later, it would, it would arise again and it, it got exhausting. Um, and it seemed that our team was always reacting to the issues rather than being proactive to those issues and actually solving them. What are some tips along the issue solving track that you could give our listeners that are experiencing some of the same things? My, uh, my coaching brain kicks in and I want to ask, okay, so Jonathan, what do you think you could do? <laughs> what have you done? Because I know that you guys all know, the, you know, some of the best ways to do this. And this is one of those things that again, we're solving symptoms. You know, your, your warehouse manager comes in and has this problem and you quickly solve it for them, right? We're leaders. We know the answer. We can, yeah, sure. Yes, no, go, don't go, spend money, don't spend money. Here you go. But what we need to make sure we're focusing on is what is the root? Like, why was that caused? Why did that happen? We can fit, you know, we usually need to fix it, right? The air conditioning's on fire. Okay, let's fix it right now. But then why? Why was it on fire? Were we overworking our machines? Do we need another unit? What was, like, let's dig deeper into the reason why that was happening, solve that, and then it won't come back again. In most cases, we can't eliminate things just catching on fire, I guess, sometimes. But um, so to the effect that you can identify that root issue and solve it, you have to extract usually to do's out of it, right? You have something to do. I have something to do. I got to go tell somebody something. I got to call somebody. It may take, you know, a little bit of time to get some of the to-dos done to solve the thing fully and get it completely done. Where I see it fall off is, is in that piece. Somebody took a to-do to go do it and then the guy didn't answer the phone. So, and then three weeks later, you as the leader are like, oh, I remember, weren't they supposed to, oh, hey, did you call and do that? Oh yeah, like the guy didn't answer the phone. And you're like, well, I thought it was done like this whole time. Like, why didn't you? And then people like stop and then they move on to their regular tasks of stuff that they're doing and they forget. So if we can have a very clear place like an issues list and a to-do list where we house these things so that our brain doesn't have to remember. That's the thing. In anything that you do, I, I love lists. I'm a list person because I'm the person that will go to the store and forget to get the one thing I really needed because they had other cool, cute stuff like highlighters that I got. And then I got home and I'm like, I went for butter and I didn't even get it because I didn't have a list, right? Your brain cannot, should not remember all these silly little things. 
make these lists in places that people can recall so that they can get them done and not have to just remember. When people just have to remember stuff, it doesn't get done. Mm -hmm. And then from there, you have accountability of getting that thing done, right? Maybe it comes up once you call that they're like, oh yeah, we need to replace the air conditioner, not just fix it. Okay, now we need to discuss budget. Now what's the next step? Just keep chunking things into little pieces. Mm -hmm. The other way that you're going to flip this is coach your people to get to the right answer. Again, we're all leaders. We can tell you what to do. We can answer any question you have. Yes, no, do this, do that. We want them, we want our managers and our people to get to where they understand our thought process. We're enabling and empowering them and giving some guiding principles that they can use so they can make decisions. Imagine the amount of time you will get back on a daily and weekly basis when you don't have someone in your office every two seconds asking a stupid question. They're typically not stupid, but they feel irritating because you just know the answer right away and they need help. Let's use a question to statement ratio that's appropriate with the team member so that way you can ask them, well, what do you think you should do? Well, how would you do it? How would you get there? And maybe they're right and maybe they're wrong, but you're gonna guide them in that direction. Get to a point where they're coming to you and telling you what they're gonna do. Hey, Jonathan, air conditioning's on fire. I already put it out. I already called the guy. I already put it on at this. I already did these things. Good? Oh, yeah, you did it all. Actually, maybe also let this person know. Okay, got it. Don't let them leave monkeys on your desk of all of the things that they need you to come and do and figure out enable and empower them. That's how you guys are going to grow and scale these businesses that you have is when you empower and coach others to, to be able to solve the, the problems. I know for me as a visionary, um, I also get shiny object syndrome, like you were talking about and that to do list that we have on our weekly meetings holds me really accountable. Um, and so when I've gone and spent the, re the rest of the week after we've agreed to do stuff, working on other things, and I, and I know that meeting's coming, it gets a real fire under my butt to really get those things done because I, I, I'm accountable to the whole team. And in front of everyone, I have to say, sorry, I didn't do that. And it feels horrible. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm not doing it on purpose. It's just, that's kind of how my brain works, which is why we need this tool that keeps us all accountable. And so it's the same for our team members. I, I, I personally love that. Uh, Jamie, these are strange times we're living in. It's COVID-19, the world is upside down. Some businesses are thriving and some are really struggling. And I know you work with a lot of businesses. Um, any tips for those who are struggling right now? Like, what do you see the businesses that are thriving? Like, what are they doing right? What are they doing differently? that's giving them that space to, to thrive right now? Yeah, great question. The people that I see thriving right now are living in an abundance mindset rather than scarcity. They're looking at this in terms of, ooh, challenge. How can I figure stuff out, right? How can I put new things in place? How can I shift and adjust and move things and play a little bit of Tetris? It's like, the visionaries time to shine all of a sudden rise up like okay now I can figure this out right I can I can do this and I think that it's it's the leaders setting the tone in instances where you can see the leaders you know they're there for their people they care deeply they care for their people right they care for the company they care for their customers at any level and and that's really what's driving things. It's, it's not having like a fake gra gratitude or, or positive attitude. It's not fake at all. It needs to be genuine. It has to be like, what are we, if we can really look at what we're grateful for right now and what we have, the tools we do have, the resources we do have, ways we can leverage things that, that, that we have available to us and really bringing in the team on what's going on. I think that you can open and honestly tell people what's happening without scaring people, right? It's kind of all going to be on how you show up as the leader. And it's hard for a lot of us who 
don't see us as like this big scary boss owner where it's like you know people are looking at me like I, i'm just one of you like what are you looking at me for <laughs> they are they're looking at you they want they want to know how you're doing they want to know how the business is going they want to know first and foremost usually how it's going to affect them and what it's going to look like for them so to the effect that we can be open and honest and not scare people um have plans right be on the same page have that strategy um one thing that's really really important again at leadership and especially visionary level and integrator is to take your clarity breaks take this time whether it's once a day once a week once a month might be a big bit of a stretch in these times um to kind of elevate yourself up and look down on the business and, and strategize and think and clear your head look at opportunities look at things you can do to improve look at ways that you can survive and take that time um intentionally it has to be intentional right friday afternoon at three o'clock is probably not the right time to take a clarity break right you're not focused you're not there your mate your brain is going to what you're doing this weekend or what you're doing friday night like you have to be intentional about the time you choose to do something like a clarity break or strategy thinking time you know for me it's first thing in the morning like dogs woke me up i fed them they're handled outside they're doing their thing and i can sit and take a couple of hours to think strategize write down notes just kind of get into it i'm a morning person so that's a good time for me know yourself know what works for you in terms of when you're going to take that time Sometimes it's hard for visionaries because they end up just making this giant like to-do list that they're going to then pass to the integrator and say, you're going to, here's all this stuff for my clarity break. Just do all this stuff. There has to be probably some sort of follow-up meeting, right? Maybe that it's a closer same page with the integrator and the visionary together weekly to sit down and say like, okay, let me hear your ideas. Is this a right now thing? Is this a future thing? is that like what does this look like and pull it out of the visionary dial it in again as the integrator you're going to make sure you bring it to leadership team execute on it um just so that you guys can all stay clear stay focused and on the same page um some great things i've seen like you guys have done as well is have better communication with your team that went from in person to virtual now let's have a couple of weekly meetings all team Let's have some time to ask people how they're doing. Let's be a resource for our team that says, this is what's going on, or we've got the facts, or we just got this info off the CDC website, or whatever. Like, be a source of comfort and stability for your team as much as you can. Um, because again, you don't know what's going on with them at home, and that could affect their performance. And you wanna just have a very clear connection with your people via same pages, via group meeting, whatever you can. Um, again, in that, in more of that gratitude abundance mindset rather than scarcity scared, using negative words like, you know, threat and terror and wartime and all these things that can, who would any of those words make feel good? Like, you're not gonna be, oh, I'm super pumped. Like, let's do this. No, you're not. You're not excited by those words. Those are not encouraging words for you. Those are not going to get your team at top performance by any means. So that's my two cents of what I've seen going on. Uh, on that note, Jamie, I just wanted to share with our listeners, there's a book that actually, I think all Kevin and Jonathan and I all have, it's called the Road Less Stupid, it's by um, a guy named Keith Cunningham. We call him Uncle Keith because he's like our wise uncle that we wish we had, but um, he has great thinking time is what he calls clarity breaks, thinking, thinking time questions in there. So um, Kevin, if we can make sure to put the, like a link or something yeah. with all the resources and books and stuff that we're talking about. Yeah, yeah prompts great. are great. If you have prompts, to answer the questions. Cause yeah, I know sometimes it's hard for people. Yeah. Integrators usually again, go sit down and start making like a bullet list of all the stuff I gotta do, but that's not what the purpose is. It's not a time for you to get organized. Yeah, and I think like you were saying, Jamie, you gotta be super intentional about this time and protect it. Cause I think 
reality is when you get really busy, it's like the first thing that you want to like sacrifice, you want to let go. And actually it's like ironic because that's actually what you need to protect the most. Um, but, but totally agree. I think that's a, that's a game changer. Um, but yeah, you know, I just kind of wanted to share our experience with implementing all of this, like, and for all our listeners, like, trust us, like you guys are in a good place. It's normal. Uh, I think this is just the the story and the trajectory of a, a growing business is like, start small, you scale up, and all of a sudden you're like, this thing that I was doing out of my like, office or garage is now this like, giant monster that's like, trying to kill me because there's so many moving parts and um that's 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 what our story was you know like we started and kept growing and growing and it's, it's great great problems but at a certain point um it was no longer fun you know and uh we need to do something uh jenna and i joined this uh group called eo it's entrepreneurs organization we're in the los angeles chapter and from there uh, we learned about EOS, uh, which is what Jamie's talking about. And initially, we read the book Traction, which is kind of like a like a Bible or guideline for uh, EOS. There you go. Uh, you can get it on Amazon. And we're like, oh man, these uh, these uh, uh, implementers, integrators, are, they're pretty expensive. So we're going to try to like self implement. Um, and it was good. You know, we did we grew a lot in that period too. Um, and we just kind of. Th- follow the book, you know, line by line and just uh, implemented it uh, internally. But at a certain point, we realized like, hey, this is really helpful. It's really working. We should double down on this. And that's when we, uh, we went on, on the look and we found Jamie. Uh, and that's, that's really uh, been a huge game changer. You know, we're not, we're not being sponsored by EOS or Traction or anything. Like, it, I think one of the reasons we wanted to start off our podcast series with this topic is... Uh, it's not sexy. It's not the latest, like greatest, like hack or tip or trick, but I can honestly say it's probably had the most impact on your business. And it's had the biggest impact in terms of um, just scaling the business, but also like my own stress management, uh, having boundaries, improving my lifestyle of running this, you know, ultimately, I think we all know that uh, we're not in this for the business. Like the business ultimately has to serve us. We want to work on the business, not in it. And this really helped us do it. Yeah, just to just to tag along on that, Kevin's absolutely right. I think you know when we self implemented this, we saw a huge jump in just productivity and overall um, just organization and structure within our our team. However, I think like even though we had grown to this and things were going well, we still felt that we were probably working in the business more than on it. Um, and it still seemed like some things were still a little bit of a struggle, which is you know I think you know why we went ahead and decided to, like like Kevin said, double down. Um, you know, we were doing the weekly L10s. We kind of had an accountability chart, you know. We had our core values built out, but we really didn't follow them. You know, we were, we had a little bit, of, you know, right person, right seat. We were talking about a people analyzer. We're kind of just doing things halfway, not fully in depth. And I think it was mainly because we saw the improvement and we kind of were good with it. Maybe a little bit of settling, but I think right, you know, towards the end of, you know, you know, when we when we first started implementing this, we were like, "Wow, like this actually really works." How to we how do we accelerate this and like really just make this thing blow up? And you know, we you know we met we met Jamie through um, a friend, another uh, you know fellow entrepreneur named Rob, uh, and things just started rolling from there. And I can't say how much it's improved just overall structure, organization, communication with our team. Um, like Kevin said, stress boundaries. Um, the feeling of actually being and enjoying what we're doing on a daily basis and on a weekly basis. It just was huge. Yeah. (laughs) Just to add on to that, I think one of the things that Jamie really pushed us to do is be really honest where like as the owners or as entrepreneurs, like we're, the buck kind of stops with us. Right. And so who's really holding us accountable um, and who's really challenging us uh, a lot of the times. She really helped us like really focus and dig down deeper than we probably could have on our own. Um, Jonathan mentioned the core values. Like we had core values that weren't us. They were aspirational. And like, I mean, this has been a topic of discussion, you guys, so much because we're like, yeah, but if we don't make it the core value, how will we get there? And we, she really wrestled with it uh, with us to kind of help us get to 
um, like where we really should be. And I, I think one of the biggest benefits is, you know, yes, you can self implement and you can read the chapters and try to do it on your own. But like, just like building a business, if you've already done it once before, you kind of know what pitfalls to look out for. But if it's your first time doing it, it's like, you just don't know and you're going to have to stumble through. And it's like having a guide that says, oh, watch out for that. And you can still make your own mistakes, but still just having someone who's been there, done that, uh, walk you through, I think is, is so much value. And, and it's a time and money saver, right? Why take six months to a year to do something that you could do in two months or three months that especially if it is like the biggest ROI in your business, um, why wouldn't you want to accelerate that? Um, I think that what Jamie also helped us really identify was uh, what our unique abilities were in terms of like what we really should be working on in the business and giving us permission to not feel the guilt of like not being in the trenches with our team per se. Mm -hmm. I think that's one struggle that um, all of us have. And, and especially if you bootstrapped and built your business from the bottom up, you feel a sense of guilt of what well, I need to be out in the warehouse and I need to be here and I need to be doing this thing. And it's like, in reality, you're doing such a disservice to your team and to your business by not sitting in the right seat and doing your job. It's the same as if you had like a warehouse manager who kept insisting on being on the phone with customer service. You'd be like, what are you doing? Go do your job. Like, you know, and, and so it's giving us that permission and that visibility to step back. And I think that's been a huge, uh, huge help for us. Um, all right. So I came up with a tagline question for the River Source Logistics podcast. And this is something we're going to ask every guest that we have. Uh, and Jamie, what is a question that we should have asked you that we haven't asked? Oh, I have to look at my notes now. Um, I can't think of anything. I mean, we talked about EOS, we talked about traction. So maybe just giving everybody a glimpse of like, okay, now we've got all this info. How do we get started? How do we move forward here? So like they said, you could read, read the book. This literally, you see all my sticky notes. This is every different little topic. You can literally take this as a guide and self-implement. It is possible. Lots of people do it. Like everybody just said, if you can have somebody come in that's done it before and can tell you this is kind of a right way, this is the best way, here's a best practice. You know, when I talk to most people in your industry and everybody in e-commerce, the common theme is we grow faster than every, everybody else. We grow faster than any industry. We grow faster. This is just how we operate. Because if you look at the system with implementing EOS, you know, you can go a route which is working with a certified EOS implementer. So you can go to eosworldwide.com and they'll place you with an, a local EOS implementer. And these are people who are visionaries. They've owned their own businesses before, right? They've, they've been in your visionary seat before. So they're coming in, they're coaching you, mentoring you, talking to you, great knowledge, all these things. You know, they meet with you once a quarter and and then it's on you guys to go execute so the options between self-implementing or going with that implementer route is either way using somebody like what i do as a fractional integrator can come in in that integrator seat in the interim whether you have an integrator or not in this case you guys have jonathan who's a freaking fantastic integrator so you made my job really easy jonathan um I can come in kind of coach mentor in your situation. You guys were doing kind of like an audit. We've already been doing it a year. How are we doing? What should we be doing? How should this go? What's the right, wrong way? And then I can kind of come in, drop some knowledge, pull and extract. That's my goal is to pull and extract out of you guys. I call it asking the dumb questions because I'm going to come in and ask you guys dumb questions and you're going to light bulb and be like, Oh yeah, you didn't think about that. 
or, oh, that's how the team is going to interpret it. Oh, we didn't think about that. Because again, mm-hmm. you guys are great at what you do. You know your industry, you know your business. It's secondhand to you. It's so simple. I come in as like, I know this really well. And I'm going to talk to you guys very simply and plainly about, again, questioning you like, okay, you made that decision. Well, why? Who's it going to affect? What's going to happen? What is our next step? And then we have the light bulb moments that are like, oh, yeah, maybe we need to do it this way or change. You know, it's just kind of having that outside person come in and give you guys that that advice that is really helpful. Um, and again, it can be done in, in a few months to just make sure you're dialing it in. And you have to have a strong core team that once that fractional integrator or implementer even steps away, you guys keep running it. You have to keep running it. That's the key. If you just abandon it because I'm no longer there watching you, <laughs> then then it's not going to work. It's not something that you just like upload into your system and now it's just there for you. You have to mentor people in it. You have to onboard new people and teach them about it. Um, so it's it's an ongoing thing for sure. Um, there is some work to be done, but again, hiring somebody who's been there, done it before, like myself, like an implementer um, in, in EOS will take you there a lot faster, which is how fast it seems e-commerce people like to move. So it can be done. Yeah. And I think also, and this is very general speak, but a lot of these, uh, burgeoning e-commerce entrepreneurs, um, they really need this. This is that missing piece because like they're so scrappy and just they're hustling and they're just building things that never existed before. Uh, this structure component is such a good balance to uh, just what they're doing. Um, Jamie, what, what's, uh, what's the best way to get in touch with you or to learn more about you and what you do? I know you're already like in high demand and you're a hot commodity, uh, but in case any of our listeners want to reach out to you, what's the best way to do that? Yeah, definitely. If you guys are interested, have questions. Um, I know a lot of fractional integrators out there, um, as well as myself when I am available. Um, yeah, you guys can reach out to me. Um, I've got a sheet that I think will drop in the chat that you guys can download. It'll have all my contact info on it. Um, other than that, it would be just, you can call me, um, text me. The number one, my most favorite way is email. I'm not a slack slacker. I'm, I'm not. <laughs> I do it. I do it for you guys. I don't slack with anybody else typically. So yeah, it's going to be, um, just email me, Jamie at virtual You can check out my website. There's a bunch of information on there and, and resources and stuff as well. So yeah, I look forward to hearing. Great. Well, I'll definitely put those in the show notes. Thanks. All right. Thank you, Jamie. Um, just for anybody listening out there that doesn't know who River Source Logistics is, um, we are your third party Amazon solution. Uh, you know, we're here to help. We can help you. Um, if you're in the e commerce platform, we deal with so many different clients, different things that we can do. Um, we specialize on the Amazon front. We know it front and back. We have, you know, my partners here, Jen and Kevin, are highly experienced, like we had said in the beginning there. Um, to really help you scale and grow your business. And that's what um, these future podcasts that we're rolling out are here to do is uh, not only do we want to help you on the, you know, operational supply chain front, we also want to help you on the organizational structure within your businesses and, and really just kind of give you the, the piece of the knowledge that we feel are value added to help you um, take, the, take, your, take your business to the next level. Thank you guys so much for listening. Make sure you subscribe and follow us on social media. And if you guys have any topics you'd love for us to cover or share, please comment and let us know. We will definitely read the comments. Thank you guys. Cool. Thanks guys. Bye. See you next Thanks time. for having me. Bye, Jamie. Thanks, Jamie. Bye. Thank you.